introduce today uh, Diofontane approximation. Suppose um, alpha is a real number and not rational. Then um, alpha, of course, can be approximated as well as we want by rational numbers. Since Q stands in R, but we are interested in estimating the um, error in the approximation uh, compared to uh, the denominator of the rational approximation. And there is a, a theorem of uh, due to Dirichlet. states that there exist infinitely many rational numbers such that such that the difference alpha minus p over q is less than 1 over the square of the denominator. And um, homogeneous version of the theorem states that uh, if you take a linear form alpha 1 to y, uh, where alpha 1, alpha 2 are rational, and the ratio is, uh, alpha 1, alpha 2 are real, and the ratio is irrational, then uh, for infinitely many to deduce one from the other, but I prefer to give both because later I shall use uh, the inner forms. One can uh, try to improve on these exponents for certain uh, real numbers. So there exist uh, some real numbers which can, can be approximated by sequences of rational numbers um, better than uh, um, what is assured by Dirichlet theorem. For instance, if you take a number like volume number. Then, uh, for each big uh, N, <coughs> consider the rational number obtained by in the infinite uh, sum after terms 
and the distance alpha minus pi pn over q n actually is the order of uh, So for this special number, one can replace two by any number, uh, three, four. Or well, for every mu, this holds provided n is large enough. So for instance, it holds for mu equals three, two and a half, or one million. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's not difficult to prove that for uh, almost all real numbers, um, with respect to the usual uh, Lebesgue measure, uh, this inequality cannot be improved. So if, you, if one replaces two by something strictly larger than Q, this inequality will have only finite dimensions. Um, are interested in in the case uh, uh, where alpha is an algebraic number, and with this respect, there is a famous theorem of Rock. It says that uh, if alpha is algebraic, yeah. Uh, epsilon sign is positive, the inequality alpha minus p over q less than 1 over q 2 plus epsilon has only a finite dimension. algebraic number is in this uh, zero measure set formed by real numbers which can be approximated better than what is expected by Dirichlet theory. Well, um, we shall see that this theorem has strong uh, consequences uh, in, uh, in the theory of uh, uh, Diffontine uh, equations. And first, I'd like to show some um, uh, generalizations. generalizations. First, there is um, a theory of Mahler. number by 
an alpha set of uh, periodic numbers. And so the theorem is, states that if alpha qp is algebraic, Positive, then uh, the inequality uh, don't use the letter P anymore, so like alpha minus A over B, periodic absolute values less than, yeah, I should say the maximum of A and B the minus two minus epsilon has only finitely many solutions. A being two. In This is the periodic absolute value. Uh, no, this is the um, usual absolute value. In, um, in the Archimedean case, I could have replaced uh, Q by the maximum of Q over of P over Q. It could have been the same um, because, you see, if P over Q is close to alpha, then P and Q have the same magnitude. If you take a, a, an infinite sequence Pn over Qn tends to alpha, then uh, Pn is approximately alpha Qn, so it's constant by Qn. In this case, uh, it may be that uh, B is uh, uh, much smaller than A. Uh, it may even happen that the alpha is uh, the limit of a sequence of the integer numbers. So. Uh, if, if I just write b to the minus 2 minus epsilon, it will be, uh, it will be correct. Um, further, generalization is due to read out Uh, first uh, notation, if nu is, a, nu is a place and let's say beta is, is a rational number and non zero, I say that the distance the new adic distance from beta to infinity is number one over absolute value of beta. With, uh, with this convention, reduced theorem says that <coughs> alpha is a real algebraic number. S is a finite set of um, primes. And epsilon, a positive number. Then uh, the inequality alpha minus um, a over b, usual absolute values, product so, uh, p in s of the periodic absolute value of, well, of the minimum of one 
many countries values of A over B. And the product for C ness of the minimum right here. Of one and the distance to the infinity less than the maximum a and b to the minus two minus epsilon has only finitely many solutions I should explain Geometric interpretation of triple product. So the first term is the usual distance from uh, the rational number A over B to the real number to approximate. And the second term, uh, when the, the minimum is less than one, so when it is A over B, the absolute value is the distance uh, to zero. And uh, this last term is the, the distance to infinity, as I said. So, uh, um, for instance, example, if uh, A <coughs> is of the form is uh, fixed to be the supposed to be of the form P1 A1 P H A H for find P1 P H fixed and B is supposed the form q1 b1 q k b k with the q1 q k fixed then a over b is close to zero the pi adic distance and a over b is close to infinity in the qj adic distance and more precisely the product uh, for P in S, well, let S the set P1, PH, Q1, QK so of the minimum of 1 A over B, um, P multiply from P in S the minimum of 1 a over b minus infinity this is um, the maximum well you can calculate exactly this is uh, a to the minus 1, B to the minus 1. So, in, in this case, um, let's say if alpha minus A over B is small, yes, A and B are the same magnitude, So this is less less than the max. 
maximum of a b to the minus two so up to a constant uh, which depends on all. so uh, in this case uh, in this case the distance alpha minus A minus two here on the left and the minus two on the, on the right. And this uh, outside uh, finite set of rationals A over B. So for all but finitely many rationals A over B, we have this inequality. If A and B are supposed to be product of fixed points. So we can improve on the two plus epsilon theorem of Rao. If we have uh, information on the prime divisors of A and B. For instance, if the prime divisors of numerator and denominator are fixed, we can replace two plus epsilon by simply epsilon. But uh, this theorem uh, permits to treat uh, several other cases. For instance, the case in which only one between numerator and denominator has a, uh, a fixed uh, set of prime divisors. In this case, the, the exponent uh, 2 plus epsilon will be lower to 1 plus epsilon. And another possibility is that uh, numerator or denominator of both are the product of uh, uh, powers of fixed primes times a, a factor which is controlled. For instance, uh, if A has a factor which is of the magnitude at least of square root of A of this form, then we can get uh, an exponent one half of the two plus epsilon. Um, okay, uh, by the way, this, this very special case um, has been uh, much improved by the theory of linear forms in logarithms uh, introduced by Baker. Uh, but only only this special case where both A and B are completely product of, of fixed primes. Finally, the most general version of Roth theorem has been provided by Lang. Archimedean absolute value, this is R. And then uh, actually, possibly, alpha nu equals infinity. So basically, alpha nu equals the point of the projective line. Q 
So, uh, epsilon is positive. Uh, the theorem says there are only finitely many solutions to uh, the inequality product for mu s uh, and for mu minus a over b mu are the capacity values less than the maximum of a and b to the minus 2 minus epsilon. So all these cases are included in reduced case one takes only zero and, and infinity uh, to be approximated in a periodic sense in Mahler theorem one takes just one uh, point to be approximated in, in periodic sense here we can for every place Archimedean or periodic choose one point uh, which might also be zero and infinity Actually, there are extensions to uh, number fields. By this, I mean that uh, the approximation can uh, be taken. So we have to change something. For instance, uh, if you take the number field Q square root of 2, then it is uh, more dense in some sense in, in R than Q. So uh, expect that uh, real numbers can be better approximated by elements of q square root of 2 than by simply by rational. So we cannot expect to have uh, the exponents uh, 2 plus epsilon if you replace p over q by elements uh, of, of this uh, number field. So uh, we have to take into account uh, some normalization. And for this, uh, it's better to to change the normalization of the absolute value. So, the infinite places, uh, no, no, not necessarily. number field is more k and place mu so there are two cases mu might be a medium or might be piadic If it, it is Archimedean, we normalize the absolute value, the Nordic absolute value, uh, in such a way so that 
for election veto. Q. The new habit of certain values of beta is the usual one to the ratio k over q over k nu over r. Oh, sorry, it's the opposite. K nu, <coughs> the degree of K nu over R might be one or two, if, if nu corresponds to an embedding in 2C and not in R, then this is two. If nu is a real place, this is one. And in the periodic uh, case, we want that for beta in Q, the absolute, the nuadic absolute value of beta, the usual absolute to the same over QP over K with this normalization the product formula holds this infinite product um, is in fact a, a finite product because all these all the terms uh, but finitely many are equal to one and the fact that the product is one is a consequence of the easy fact that it holds over Q and of, of our choice for the normalization. Now we define the height alpha as the product over nu of the maximum of one absolute value of alpha. This is called height. Bail height. Realize to, to protect the space. If uh, take a point uh, X, X not X N P N. Coordinates are uh, homogeneous coordinates, so not all uh, zero. Then define the height of x to be the product of our own places new of the maximum of x not up to x n. And uh, this and so the height of alpha equals the height of the projective point one alpha. Um, the projective height is well defined in the sense that it does not depend on the choice of the coordinates. If we multiply by uh, constant lambda, so the, the maximum of lambda x0, lambda x nu, this is absolute value of 
number multiplied by the maximum of x0, xn, and by the product formula, the product of all places of the new handicap value of lambda equals 1. So the height is. Now um, I can give the, the really general version. So just erase and modify. So that's a finite set of places of K. So for every place I take point in the computer. Actually, it might be empty, again, with finitely many solutions to this inequality less than height of beta to the minus 2 minus epsilon. Voila. Generalization. Is this the mid subspace theorem? was proved in a particular but significant case by Schmidt and then generalized by uh, Schlick. points on the line. We have, we have points alpha nu, which is better to think as points of the projective line. We approximate hyperplanes in a, a higher dimensional projective space by points of this projective space. So uh, the theorem says follow. So, uh, I give two equivalent versions. This is the homogeneous version. Uh, so for each 
mu in s let uh, n mu 1 to n mu n be uh, a basis for uh, the vector space of linear forms in uh, uh, X1 so, uh, with algebraic coefficients in in the completion table. Then then the solutions product uh, so mu in S product of I to F one to N and mu I of X one is absolutely less than the height of the point one of hyperplane. Hyperplane of K to the N. And now I write the homogeneous So S uh, is a finite set of places uh, uh, with no other we do not require that the Archimedean ones are uh, contained uh, as before and new one and new and linear independent. So a basis, and um, with algebraic coefficients, and then I can write inequality in the homogeneous form. So a new i of x absolute value divided by the maximum. So this ratio now uh, only depends on the projective point and this I want to be less than the height of the projective point x1 and I don't need to to add a one to the minus n minus itself. Uh, the, the solutions are contained in finitely many 
dos planos. Of D and minus one. Okay. And the solutions are in uh, in K uh, to D. So X uh, so the solutions take to be uh, they do not need to be with integral coefficients. As we observed, we can multiply by a constant. Uh, both terms remain unchanged. Um. Now let's see how Roth theorem can be deduced from any of the two versions of the subspace theorem. So we take alpha algebraic number. We have to estimate uh, alpha minus p over q in the, in the usual sense. Of course, is 1 over q, uh, q alpha minus p. So uh, we can apply the subspace theorem. with of course k equals q as contains only the usual absolute value and so we have uh, n equals 2 and we have to consider two linear forms nu is, is, is that is just one possibility and so the first linear form will be along x1, x2 equals uh, x2 alpha minus x1. And second linear form will be any uh, linear form and not multiple of this one, for instance. So this is a 1 and 2, for instance, is this is 2. So uh, the subspace theorem implies that uh, outside A finite set of hyperplanes, uh, but in this case it is uh, a finite set uh, of lines. In a uh, uh, square, or oh, a point. Uh, We have that the product L1 of PQ and 2 of PQ is larger than uh, maximum of PQ <coughs> minus epsilon. So we have Applied by Q is larger than uh, one over maximum of P Q. Yes, 
Dai. Eh. As we have already remarked, um, P and Q have the same magnitude. Otherwise, uh, the, this estimate will be, there will be a, an easier way to prove a much more than the theorem. So, uh, basically, Q alpha minus P, Q larger than a constant, plus one over Q the epsilon, and dividing by Q squared, we obtain not theorem. Actually, this is outside the finite number of lines. So for AB, outside <coughs> finite number of lines, uh, line, of vector lines, so lines uh, for the, containing the origin in Q2. So, uh, so the the ratio A of B must be outside the finite set. So we think that this inequality holds for all but finitely many ratios of A of over B, which is exactly the statement of the theory. This is minus epsilon. Yes. Ah, the, this one. Oh, this is um, because uh, um, the, because here we take we take points in, uh, in with integral coordinates. Well, uh, it's, oh no, oh no, you, you are right. Actually, it might be. Well, th this is certainly true because if you take one, it is a, it is a yes. But you say that you can uh, eliminate one. Uh, problem is that no. Well, uh, well, the, 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 there is. Um, the, the, this is this is the problem. If you. For instance, if n equals 2, and x1 is equal to x2, then uh, the height will be 1. And here, we consider, so uh, consider the point, point xx, for n x, it's just one, one single point in, uh, in projective space, while uh, in, uh, here we consider different points. So if we have inf infinitely many solutions all of this kind, in this case uh, we, we, we say that there are infinitely many. Here there, there is just one. Okay. Uh, as unit equation theorem can be deduced from the subspace theorem. Let's consider the, the case of two variables. So uh, recall that we are interested in the equation u plus b equals 1, where u and b are s units. And I said that there are only finitely many solutions. Um, There was a special case, uh, the equation 2 to the a plus 3 to the b equals 5 to the c, for instance, which after dividing by 5 to the c, reduces to this one. So how can we 
linked uh, solution to this equation to Diofontaine um, approximation. We can, for instance, uh, let beta to be the number two over a, two to the a over five to the c. Then say beta minus one is a to the b over five to the c. And so uh, the idea is that uh, uh, beta is close to zero in triadic absolute values, is close to uh, infinity, absolute value, and uh, beta is close to one in uh, no, this is two adic. So beta is uh, two to the A over five to the C in three adic and usual absolute value. And if you calculate the product of the distances, so um, a minus zero, two adic absolute values, two to the minus a, and b minus infinity, five adic absolute values, is five to the minus c, and the product values, b minus 1, periodic absolute values is what is 3 to the b or 5 to the c multiplied by 3 to the minus b, so it's 1 over 5 to the c. So, uh, so the, the triple product So um, now I'd like to just generalize this uh, uh, this special uh, case and to treat the general case u plus v equals one. So. Actually, here it was a lot of do. Now, we consider the general case. We shall use the, uh, the linear forms in two variables. So, uh, so S uh, is. Uh, as is finite set of places of a number p k containing the two ones. So uh, for 
It's new in mass. Uh, we define two independent linear forms. So if uh, nu is p added, we take uh, L nu i equals x i for i one two. If nu is a tendium, we take a nu one equals uh, x one plus x two, and l nu two equals uh, x one. If the absolute values of u is less than one, is le less than less than or equal to the value of d, d and x2 otherwise. And the point x will be ug. Now, uh, now consider the, the product. If uh, uh, the absolute value of u is less than uh, yes, yes, um, u v, v will be the, the solution, and we I take the point as the value v. Now here I can um, I have an expression of the. Yes, yes, you are right. But uh, of course, there are only two cases. So, so if, if there are, yes, if, if there are, you are right. If there are infinitely many solutions, so uh, yes, for infinitely many, the choice. Well, oh, it's a, a right observation. Um, so, uh, here, either. U plus V multiplied by U or U plus V multiplied by V. Uh, now I can always um, multiply and divide by V in the first. multiply and divide by u in, in the second case. So this will be We are in this case, if u is the minimum of the two, so I divide by the maximum. In this case, is v is the maximum, is the minimum, so I uh, again divide by the maximum. So here, always have the maximum of u and v. And now uh, the product for new piadic. Of the 
of I of L I. By the product formula, the product over all places of the absolute values of u uh, equals one. And on the on the other hand, if u is an S unit, the product for new uh, well, the value f for new outside S is 1, so this is the product for new in S, the absolute value new. Here we use the fact that U is an S unit, and idem for D. So in this, in this product, we eliminate uh, every occurrence of U and D. And so what remains the product for new in S product I of L new I X remains the product for new ingredients of what here Q plus V is equal to one. So one over Epsilon is choosed less than one. So This is the first application of uh, the Fantine approximation to the Fantine equation. Now I'd like to show um, a second application. think uh, support test uh, integral coefficient which is homogeneous of degree uh, capital N which is at least three with no common factors in C of so every homogeneous polynomial K 
can be into variables, can be factored over the complex, and uh, uh, we suppose the factors are pairwise distinct. Then we take uh, the integer number c and the equation. f of x, y equals c has only finitely many solutions. f, y, that's well. So the right, it's more like four. Yeah, no. For instance, the equation uh, x3 minus 2y3 equals sorry, finite in solution. This was, was proved uh, in. Uh, First, uh, deep theorem on finiteness of, of Diffontan equations. Finiteness of solutions of two Diffontan equations. And actually, <coughs> to prove this theorem by applying um, an earlier version of Roth theorem, a weaker one, which uh, uh, was proved by Tue himself, with, uh, um, a less good exponent instead of 2 plus epsilon, which is sufficient to treat this equation. Uh, let's see uh, the proof. So we can write f x y as a constant multiplied by x minus alpha 1 y, x minus alpha n y, uh, alpha 1 n uh, Distinct and complex number. And algebraic complex number. So suppose we have infinitely many solutions. Y square. So uh, we have uh, constant A multiplied by X minus alpha 1 Y, X minus alpha N Y equals the constant C. Now we divide by Y to the N, we obtain X over Y minus alpha 1 x minus x over y minus alpha n c over c, which tends to, to zero for tending to infinity. So since the product tends to zero, up to extracting a subsequence, we can suppose that one fixed term tends to zero. So for instance, x, y tends to alpha 1. And so there exists a delta, strictly positive, such that x over y minus alpha j is at least delta from j to, to n. Can for delta half of the distances of uh, one minus of j. Uh, so, um, so x over y minus alpha one absolute value x over y minus alpha n is least uh, 
x over y is minus alpha 1 multiplied by delta to the n minus 1. But this is equal to, um, this is also equal to um, c over a 1 from y to the n. So obtain x over y minus alpha 1 absolute value is less than uh, constant c over a delta n minus 1 absolute value multiplied by 1 over y to and so um, if n is uh, strictly larger than 2 which this contradicts Love <coughs> Surfaces to take epsilon less than one in the love theorem. And actually, um, the surfaces, any exponent mu less than n in a, in a theorem stating that alpha minus p over q is larger than 1 over q to the mu. So uh, Roth had the 2 plus epsilon. And if you have any exponent uh, larger than the degree n of alpha over q, you obtain finiteness. And actually, 2 uh, and uh, mu equals n over q plus one plus epsilon for every positive epsilon. Now, I'd like to give the geometric interpretation of this uh, proof will be used in the next lecture where I will prove the general case of Siegel's uh, theorem. So, um, consider the curve uh, C defined by uh, f x y equals c. So it's projective completion c tilde defined by f of x y equals c is equal to the end. Well now x y uh, projective coordinates to in the projective plane. So the points at infinity are uh, points of the form um, so alpha j 1 0 into 1 to the So there are capital N distinct points. And um, if I call um, f <coughs> function x minus alpha 1 y over f, so this is the one x over z minus alpha 1 y over z. Note that x over z and y over z are regular functions on the affine curve C. They have poles only at infinity, where z vanishes. So f is regular. It's regular on C. So it has poles only at infinity. And actually, since we have that, uh, we have from the equation that x minus alpha 1 y over z, x minus alpha 2 y over z, and so on, x minus alpha n y over z is constant. 
here I divide by z to the n, obtain that this is uh, equal to c. So it says no fault. The first one has a zero, has a zero at the point uh, alpha one, one zero. And all the others have poles at this point because Z vanishes and the numerator does not vanish at uh, alpha one. So since the product uh, uh, has no pole, the zero here is uh, sufficiently big to kill all the poles here. So F, F has a zero of order at least, actually exactly, um, N minus one. And now, we consider <coughs> two independent linear <coughs> um, forms in X over Z y over z, uh, like f and another one, for instance, x over z. Uh, they, they take uh, integral, integral values at uh, integral points If you have an integral solution to the um, two equation, you mean you have a point uh, small x, small y, one. So it's x, y integer, so dividing by one, they remain integer. And when um, when the point x, y, one approaches the point alpha 1, 1, 0, which is the case uh, we, are <coughs> we are supposing we are in this situation. F becomes very small. The second function becomes uh, large, but the product will be small because uh, the second function has a simple pole here, and the first function has uh, a zero of order at least uh, um, and minus one, so at least two by hypothesis. So the product, the product will be small, and so by applying the, um, uh, the subspace theorem to variables, which means uh, lot theorem, we obtain a contradiction. Actually, this is just a translation of, of this calculation. So the strategy is defining a morphism to P1, which is given by F and the second function, for instance, X over Z. Observing that uh, it sends C the open curve C to A1 and sends integral points of C to integral points of A1 and uh, then your fountain approximation on the line of P1. So the starting point uh, was uh, a sequence of good approximation to a certain point on the curve, not on the line, but via this morphism, we reduce the problem to the fountain approximation on the line. This method uh, does not work in general, um, for instance, it does not work for the 
nations of the form f of x y equals uh, g of x y well f is homogeneous if uh, And uh, uh, the degree of G is larger than the degree of F minus 2. Okay, so for instance, for instance, uh, minus 2Y cube equals, if it is a constant, it is a two equation. But if you take uh, x plus 1, something like that, uh, actually it's zero. Even in this case, the method does not work. Because uh, the, the fronting approximation uh, result we obtain is not, uh, not sufficient to contradict the uh, log theorem. So um, next time I will prove how to to work in the general situation and the idea is to replace p1 by uh, pn so instead of considering a morphism to p1 we consider a general morphism to a sufficiently large projective space and then apply not the rough theorem which is the, the front end approximation result on the line but it's natural generalization which is the subspace theorem which also uh, arbitrary projective space. And, well, I'll stop here for today.